Hi, this is Joan Hunter. Welcome to another exciting episode of Miracles Happen. We are so excited about what God is doing today and what He's bringing and who He's bringing to be on Miracles Happen. Today we have Bishop Robert Stearns with us today, and your life will be forever changed, touched as a result of you watching today. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith in how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen all the time in the name of Jesus, and she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tomball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for this week's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. And so say, say with me these words, say an Issachar anointing, an Issachar anointing. Here's the, the scripture. Here is the story for us. Uh, we come into uh, Second Chronicles, no, I'm sorry, First Chronicles uh, chapter 12, and we have this verse about the sons of Issachar, and it says, they are, came to David from Issachar. Men who understood the times knew what Israel should do. 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. Holy Spirit, in these brief moments we have, give us ears to hear your word that changes us. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Saul had been anointed king of Israel. Saul offended the Holy Spirit and lost that anointing. That's an incredible item to unpack in itself. Why? Because Saul's sin was far less egregious, far less uh, uh, invasive than David's sin. David sinned far more than Saul did. But Saul sinned, but then hid it from God and did not have a heart of repentance. Beloved, the condition of our heart is so important. The condition of our heart is so important. Saul offends the Holy Spirit. He lies to the Lord. He's confronted by Samuel. He kind of equivocates and makes excuses. And God lifts his hand of anointing off of Saul. Samuel goes searching for the sons of Jesse. He gets to Jesse's house. He says, Jesse, call in all of your sons. Jesse calls in all of his sons, save one, David, out in the field. You think you've got father issues. Think of that. The most famous prophet around comes to your house and calls the sons in, and your dad doesn't remember to call you. David's out in the field. Now, this, this is a whole sermon in of itself, but Samuel goes, no, 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 no. He examines the sons one by one, and each one of them, he does not have the witness of the Holy Spirit. And so what does he do? I love this, Joan. Samuel says to Jesse, uh, you must have another son. Today's prophetic craziness, we would have just, well, I feel. 
Hello. Samuel didn't play the games that we play today and make the situation work. Samuel stayed under the fear of the Lord and said, I'm not going to give this word to any one of these until I get the witness in my spirit. I don't have time to get into all that right now, but the prophetic realm of the church had better get the fear of the Lord restored into it because we are prophesying out of our soul, and that's a lot of divination and soothsaying. I'm not going to go there, except I've lost my filter, so maybe I will. Jesse, Jesse's, oh, I forgot. There's one out in the field. He calls in David. Samuel says, yes, this is the one. Samuel anoints David as king. David then goes to Saul and says, Saul, I've been anointed as king. And Saul says, oh, I didn't get the email. Well, here's, here, David, here's the keys, and here's the treasury, and here's the, the military, and uh, here you go. Here, here's the throne. Is that what happened? Is that how it happened? No. No. There was a great battle and a great degree of time between when the anointing and the promise came and when the manifestation came. Oh, the delays of God. Has anyone ever lived in the delays of God? Has anyone ever lived in the space in between when the promise was given and it was so real and so confirmed and so clear and yet you're saying, God, where is it? I'm in anguish. I'm in distress. I've got this prophetic word. It hasn't meant. How long have you been waiting? Two and a half weeks. That's most of the body of Christ right now. I've been waiting two and a half weeks. Are we ready to receive a prophetic word that takes 40 years to manifest? Are we ready to receive a prophetic word that forms us, shapes us, transforms us, breaks us, remakes us? The Bible says that even after Saul was dead, the house of Saul continued against the house of David. So, Samuel anoints David, but Saul still has the position. What was that known as? That was the kingdom of Saul. What was the kingdom of Saul? Well, it was an army, military. It was an educational system. It was the priesthood. It was an economic system. It was alliances. It was contracts. It was finances. It was the way things were done. That was the kingdom of Saul. The kingdom of Saul operated long after the anointing of God had lifted. Systems can operate long after God has left the building. Say transitional generation. Say it strong. Systems can operate long after God has lifted his glory off of them. And so there's this extended period of time where Israel has to make a decision. Oh, I hope you're listening right now. Israel has to make a decision because Saul still has power. Saul still has operations. Saul still has systems in place, alliances, contracts, covenants, finances. All of this is still operating. And where's David? David's in a cave. I'll take you to the cave when you come to Israel or Joan will. He's in a cave. He's got a guitar, a harp. Hallelujah. David's in a cave with a heart of worship, fresh oil, and a prophetic word. And now Israel has to decide, are we going to build and stay with the kingdom of Saul? Or are we going to flow with the fresh anointing and move with David. I want to tell you that we are living in a transitional generation where the church of Jesus Christ globally 
has got to decide, are we going to stay with the systems that have been in place and all that we've done? Because that's worked real well. Or are we going to get desperate and say, we need a revelation of the son of David, the Mashiach ben David, the son of David who is to come, the anointed one. And if that means we've got to get into a cave, if that means we've got to go to some former uh, cattle ranch out in the middle of a field and say, God, we're going to hold on here until we get an open heaven over this place and establish the tabernacle of David. God, we want to be where the anointing is, not where peace and safety and security are. And this is the dividing line that is going through the body of Christ right now. Into this moment, I've only got a few minutes, I've got to go quick. Into this moment, Israel has to make a decision. Can I tell you right now? I'm telling you, 2006, that's okay, it's just by angels moving furniture in the back. 2006, I said there's a dividing line coming. Right now, ministries, churches. I, 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 won't, I, I, I will soon start to name names. But before the war broke out, you know, we do our annual day of prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. We have 1,800 global Christian leaders who've signed on board. Jack Hayford and I launched it. Pastor Sammy Rodriguez uh, now is our, our co-convener. We have huge Christian names, but you would be shocked at the names that we go to. Two of them immediately come to mind. And they say, well, uh, praying for Jerusalem isn't really our burden. How about praying for Jerusalem is obedience to the word of God? And now we see manifesting. And, and can I tell you, it's almost painful for me, Joan, to watch this video with the president. Because I said, millions of us are standing with you. And this was before October 7th. And now the Jews are looking to us saying, where are you? Do you see the Hamas, pro-Hamas rallies that are filling America? If you're not terrified by this, you should be in the sense of being alert, not getting a spirit of fear. But you understand what I'm saying? Waking up. Beloved, this is not something that's coming to America. This is something that's in America. And we have got to become alerted and focused and understand this plumb line moment that we're in. Transitional generation. And so the sons of Issachar make this choice. They say, you know what? We would rather be in a cave. Joan Hunter Ministries travels around the world sharing the healing power of God. Joan Hunter Ministries is touching lives all over the world through live streaming events, books and teachings, and our prayer call center where miracles happen daily. All of this is made possible by your prayers and support. When you partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, you not only bless those who receive the message, but you open a supernatural flow of blessing into your own life. Today is a day that my God's gonna supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Today is a day that God's gonna point to me as an example of his incredible wealth to become a monthly partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, call 1-281-789-7500 or go to joanhunter.org. Today is a day of alignment. Today is a day for financial breakthrough. Today is a day for your healing. Today is a day I don't have to wait any longer for the promises. Go to joanhunter.org to give a one-time gift or text any amount you'd like to give to 281-771. 1507. Become a partner with Joan Hunter Ministries today. Miracles are happening everywhere, and now you can proclaim it everywhere you go with the Miracles Happen t shirt and blanket. The t shirts come in all sizes and a variety of colors, as well as with rhinestones and without. The Miracles Happen t shirt is available for men and women. Get your shirt today and watch as God opens doors for you to pray for the sick around you. Both the Miracles Happen t-shirts and blanket are a constant reminder for all of us that miracles happen everywhere. And check out His Healing Promises. His Healing Promises is a selection of scriptures on healing read by Joan Hunter. If you need encouragement about your healing or faith to trust in God in a difficult time, this is for you. Let your spirit be lifted, your hope restored as you listen to God's healing promises over your life. Go to miraclesappen.tv now to order your Miracles Happen t-shirt, blanket, or your copy of His Healing Promises. Or call 281-789-7500. Miracles Happen! 
Hi, this is Joan Hunter. I just want to tell you, this is the most exciting year that I have ever experienced in my entire life. People say, retire, no, refire. This is the year that God has called this ministry to go way beyond what we've ever gone before. We are planning on right now, we have six countries in Africa scheduled. We have Pakistan scheduled, uh, Iceland scheduled, and many other places scheduled for next for the year 2023. You have an opportunity to be a part of that and helping us get to where we need to go and feed the people spiritually, teach them about healing of finances, teach them about the healing of their body, not only that, but their mind and their soul, and getting rid of trauma. One of the times that we have been in Africa to pray over the trauma and to see the people totally, completely set free of the trauma and the fear is absolutely amazing. I want you to be a part of what we're doing here at Joan Hunter Ministries in 2023. You can donate at joanhunter.org. Be sure to tag it missions. Any of you that would donate over $100 or more, then I want to send you a copy of this book. And this is an awesome, amazing, miraculous book, Healings, Miracles, and Supernatural Experiences. Subtitle is Healing for Haiti. It's our experience that we had in Haiti. Uh, and there was many people that didn't have the money to go. We ended up and took 38 people who had to believe God for it. The, the expense was $250,000. We went down there totally debt free. And I'm, I'm going to encourage you. It's going to be probably somewhere between one and a half million to $2 million for our outreaches next year as we touch the world. And you get to be a part of that. And the millions of people that are going to come to Jesus because of your donation and setting us around the world. And God bless you. Thanks for praying about it. God bless. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. And I, I just love, just I really love hearing you talk. And, uh, you know, and the things that, that are coming out of your mouth, even before we went live today on camera, and the wisdom that you're sharing with me and just what you've learned through the years and, and our common friends through the years right. and so forth, and people that used to work with mom and dad, and, and now you're, you're helping them. And, yes. And it's just really, really awesome. So I welcome you to Miracles Happen, and this is Bishop Robert Stern. So say hi to everybody. Well, it, it's an honor to be here with the whole Miracles happen family and to be so connected to what God's doing through Joan Hunter Ministries and Joan you know the legacy and the mantle that you are walking in we're living in this day in this season where you know church as we've known it is not going to cut it in this hour there needs to be an apostolic anointing that comes for kingdom people who know one another by the spirit and who connect around kingdom values and that's why i thank god for everything that you're doing as i've been here at miracles happen and at the at the four corners conference center and all that god's doing there's just such a sense of kingdom honor and of, of prophetic vision for where God is taking the body of Christ. And, and thank you for being in the middle of that and for calling all of us to walk in that anointing. I think it's so exciting that, you know, I love double, you know, like double one, 11 is my number and right. double blessing, double portion. And it's like, you know, bless you in the name of Jesus. I speak, you know, multiply to. And I've got twins. And I've there you go. Sons, I know right? I'm just a tad <laughs> jealous. I don't have any natural boys, but I do have three amazing sons-in-laws that call me mom. Yeah. And, but I'm like, I'm due for twins, you know, with, with my generation and then the next generation. And I'm like, no twins yet. So, so I just like, <laughs> so we have some twins that come here all the time. So I'm like, they're just the cutest things, uh, cutest little set of twins. But the thing is, is that as we walk into, let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up just a second. We have the choice to walk into that mantle, walk into the anointing or not. Mm -hmm. I have a brother who totally doesn't serve the Lord mm -hmm. at all, who's who's eight years older than I am. Mm -hmm. And and he had the choice because he's the firstborn period, but he's the firstborn son mm -hmm. also. And according to the word. And he he goes, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm like, I'll just take your portion and my portion. Mm -hmm. And what God called you to do, I'll be happy to do whatever I can do. Whatever mom and dad did not fulfill in their lifetime, I'll be happy to pick that up and take it. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, I'm a little overloaded right now because I got all that, all that and everything else on me, not to mention my own specific calling. 
And then I keep getting prophetic words. I'm like, okay, God, I, I need a team. Right. I need a team around me. And, uh, but it was just really amazing, uh, you know, when, when you really pick up, like, you didn't have to, to take over that church. Right. Well, you know, I think going back to twins, right? Like, what's the most famous example of what you're talking about? It's Jacob and Esau. Esau had the birthright. Esau had the invitation, right? But he despised it. He didn't, you know, he was, he was caught up in the things of this world. He was yeah. caught up in the cares, the distractions, the things of this world. And Jacob was there and, and Jacob wanted that blessing. And so I think the encouragement for anybody who's watching is even if the normal circumstances of life are against you, you're not the firstborn in whatever sense you want to interpret that. You can be firstborn in God's eyes when you say yes to his call. Um, the, the church that I lead, that, that, you know, wonderful historic church, we're almost a century old. One yeah, of the oldest, I've been there many times with mom and dad. One of the most esteemed Pentecostal churches. Uh, you know, um, Bishop Reed attempted to hand that away a few times before I came. You know, I wasn't the first choice in that sense. Um, but in God's time and in God's way, it, it happened. So God is a way maker for you. Absolutely. And if you will give your yes to God, God can shift the circumstances around you so that favor rests upon your life in whatever circumstance you find yourself in. When we look at the heroes of Scripture, I think we're going to talk about Nehemiah in a moment. Nehemiah, Daniel, all of these different ones, Joseph, they were in a foreign land. They were under the control of enemy gods, right? Idolatry. But favor still rested on them. Favor does not depend on your outward circumstances. Favor depends on the condition of your heart. I know, and one of the things I'm kind of no known for is I'm God's favorite. And, uh, you know, and they go, no, no, I am. And I'm like, no, I'm God's favorite. But the thing is, you're God's favorite if you know you're God's favorite. Right. And that's what's important. Yeah. You know, I knew I was my mom's favorite, and my brother in his head knew he wasn't. Mm -hmm. But according to mom, he was also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can choose to yeah. be God's favorite, which favorite, the root word is favor. That's right. And when you just walk in that favor, you're gonna see all kinds of stuff. I, I saw this book yesterday and I'm like, you have got to mention this book here. This is, and this is like, uh, this is a million, million seller, that's for sure. Rise and Rebuild, and it's a guide to overcoming adversity. Yeah. Well, you know, this amazing title. Yes. Well, listen, every single one of us, right, at some point in our life is going to go through something that breaks down. Something in our life is not going to, we all wish we had the miracle eraser and, and it never happened, but. Scripture tells us you're, we're going to face trials. We're going to face difficulties. It's how we respond to them right. that takes those difficulties and turns them, turns them into miracles. And so this is uh, the life of Nehemiah, uh, who, which just the story of Nehemiah gripped my heart. Nehemiah faces the fact that the city of Jerusalem has fallen down. Now, I don't know what's fallen down for you. Maybe your marriage has fallen down. Maybe your business has fallen down. Maybe you've gone through a church split and you're just overwhelmed by that. Uh, maybe it's just a personal brokenness in your life. Every one of us, I know we can testify we've gone through. Yeah, we've both been through hell. Broken times. In a, if you're going through hell, keep going. That's that was Winston, stop. do not stop, Winston Churchill. So I, I just, coming out of my own times of brokenness, my own times of difficulty, God, what is the... What are the principles to rebuild? And when you study Nehemiah's life and the, the core spiritual principles that led him into the miraculous place of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, which now I've, I've been in those walls hundreds of times, right? I've been to the city of Jerusalem. You've got to get to Jerusalem if you've never been yes, there. It yes. will change your life. And I we know try, Joan, yeah, we I know go Joan pretty takes, much annually. Yeah, Joan takes wonderful trips. You need to sign up and go to Israel with her. Um, but that lasted, his obedience lasted for generations. What you're fighting for is going to go far beyond the current moment that you're in. I know right now, sometimes when you're in it, all you can see is the difficulty of the moment, but you're fighting something for your children and your grandchildren, natural or spiritual. You're fighting for the legacy of God in the earth. So this is life principles 
from Nehemiah to rebuild whatever situation in your life has broken down. Right, in Genesis 50, verse 20, I'm, I will often say I'm a Genesis 50, verse 20 kind of a woman. Though the enemy meant it for evil, to kill, steal, destroy, totally destroy us, yep. God has taken it, turned it around, and I've got a whole bunch of books as, as a result of it. But, and what God has done in my life, he's healed me, broken heart syndrome, breast cancer, all that kind of stuff, so that I can come from this platform. I've been healed, God wants to heal you. That I've had a broken heart syndrome, medically impossible to get well. And, and there's no medicine, there's no nothing. But I have, they said, you have just an, a, a beautiful heart when I got my heart examined this year. Come on. And I'm like, thank you. And, uh, you know, I don't have a heart of a 70-year-old, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got one, you know, got a new one a couple, yes. you know, about 20 years ago. So, and, and, and there's all these things and testimonies, well, God is in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, which once again proves that I'm God's favorite. But, <laughs> and you can be God's favorite but too. But you chose to be I God's chose favorite. To be and God's it really favorite. comes down to those milliseconds. I mean, it's Absolutely. down, when this hits me, where am I going to go? Where am I going to, whose report am I going to Absolutely. believe? And that is why, I'm, Joan, what you do through Miracles Happen, and, and that's why you've got to align yourself with this ministry uh, to, get, to get life, to get, you have to be reminded. You can't, you can't live 15 minutes in this world without being reminded of bad news. The minute you turn on the- Open up Facebook even. It's, it's, you know, being, it is a relentless yeah. assault on your mind to bring fear, doubt, depression, discouragement. But God says, no, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. So you've got to begin to tune into that other frequency, the frequency of heaven, come into alignment with the voice of God over your life through trusted ministries that are going to absolutely speak life and favor and blessing over you. Amen. Amen. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed you being on the show today. It's an honor. And having you here at Four Corners Conference Center. So I just want to thank y'all for watching, and I know you've enjoyed it. If you, uh, you know, you can order this book. It's through available through Amazon, yeah, Amazon or yeah, our website eagleswings.org. Like, yep, eagleswings.org, or through Amazon. I want to encourage you to get it. And then also, uh, if you need prayer, if you need ministry, uh, just give our office, the ministry, a call here two eight one seven eight nine seventy five hundred. I have a team of people waiting to hear from you, to pray with you, and to agree. And if you've enjoyed the program, I encourage you to be a part of what we're doing, and you can donate through miraclesappen.tv. And God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesappen.tv or give us a call at 1-281-789-7500 or connect with Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles happen